So transformations that leave the Hamiltonian invariant are referred to as symmetry transformations. And we have seen that whenever an observable is commuting with H, the Hamiltonian, it invariably indicates a symmetry transformation being produced by the unitary operator generated by this Hermitian operator that do commute with H. This Hermitian operator acts as the generator of a unitary operator of the form e raised to minus i epsilon this Hermitian operator. And this unitary operator will definitely account for a unitary transformation for Hamiltonian that leave the Hamiltonian invariant such that this unitary transformation is a symmetry transformation. If we connect the operator HMIT commute, so other unitary transformation generated. This operator will be the generator of that unitary transformation, and the form of this unitary operator will be e raised to minus i epsilon a. E unitary transformation Hamiltonian is a symmetry transformation. If symmetry transformation, definitely E symmetry transformation is a unitary operator and generator conservative quantity. This is in fact the connectivity between symmetry and conservation law. If you want to conserve the quantity, unitary transformation generates the unitary transformation Hamiltonian change on the Veritanilla. That is why the unitary transformation is a symmetry transformation. If the Hamiltonian is a symmetry transformation, so the unitary transformation generates right to the Hermitian operator. Our Hermitian operator is corresponding I to the physically observable quantity, conserved quantity I. So a symmetry always accounts for the conservation of a physically observable quantity or conversely, a conservation law often gives rise to a symmetry transformation for the Hamiltonian also. However, the second statement is not always valid, is not always true. Whereas the first statement will be always to a conservation law invariably implies the existence of a symmetry transformation. But a symmetry transformation not always gives rise to a conservation law. The unitary operator generally linear and linear. When a unitary operator is linear, then this will be giving rise to a conservation law. However, if it is an anti-linear operator, I hope you have discussed the linear and anti-linear operators. A is a linear operator if A operating over C1 x1 plus C2 x2 where x1 and x2 are vectors and C1 and C2 are Scalar constants. When A operate and A is an operator, of course, A operating over C1 x1 plus C2 x2 is equal to C1 A x1 plus C2 A x2, then this operator is referred to as a linear operator C2 A X2. Then this is referred to as a linear operator. If A operating over C1 X1 plus C2 X2 is equal to C1 complex conjugate A X1 plus C2 complex conjugate A X2, then this is referred to as an anti-linear operator. If no such equality is existing, then it is referred to as then it's referred to as a non-linear operator. An anti-linear operator, if it is unitary, then it is referred to as an anti-unitary operator. An anti-unitary operator can also account for a similarity symmetry transformation for the Hamiltonian. However, such an anti-linear unitary operator will not be corresponding to 
a Hermitian operator. A Hermitian operator is lying in corresponding item, a dynamical variable in the irregular. Hermitian operator is corresponding item, a dynamical variable in the irregular. That's why we have to say that conservation law invariably implies to the existence of a symmetry transformation. But a symmetry transformation does not always give rise to a conservation law. If A is conserved, then H of the system is invariant under the unitary transformation generated by A and such a transformation is referred to as a symmetry transformation. Now, besides leaving the Hamiltonian invariant, symmetry transformation gives rise to two more properties. The first property that we have already seen, this leave the Hamiltonian invariant. That is, if u is a unitary operator that account for a symmetry transformation, then h will be changed to h prime, h changes to h prime given by h prime equal to u h u dagger equal to u dagger h u. And if this is equal to h itself, then this unitary transformation is referred to as a symmetry transformation. Beside this property of leaving the Hamiltonian invariant, the symmetry transformation preserves the Hermitian characteristics of an operator. Suppose A is a Hermitian operator such that A dagger is equal to A. This is the mathematical requirement for an operator to be Hermitian. And U is a unitary operator that account for a unitary transformation for A, then A changes to A changes to A prime given by A prime equal to U A U dagger equal to U dagger A U. U A U dagger and num edukam, U dagger U, U dagger A U and num edukam. U dagger AU and non -editor. but you have seen that for unitary transformation there is a sufficient condition. Necessary condition is A prime equal to U dagger AU and sufficient condition is this is equal to U A U dagger. The lay the venom angle would come from U dagger on a different. Up a prime item A prime in the format is on a is a Hermitian operator in the Namkaria. We will have to check whether A prime is Hermitian or not. A prime Hermitian on the check is an A prime in the dagger. A prime dagger now has the meaning of taking the dagger of the right side. That is U dagger A U old dagger. That's equal to A B C old dagger is C dagger B dagger A dagger. If you think the dagger is a reverse order, this is now U dagger A dagger U dagger old dagger. U dagger old dagger is U itself. And you already know, or if, if you like, you can put it here say U dagger old dagger. Now this is equal to U dagger A dagger. A dagger is equal to A since A is Hermitian. So this is A. <coughs> U dagger, old dagger is U itself. That is equal to U dagger AU. What is U dagger AU? That is A prime. Now look at the left side and right side. A prime dagger is equal to A prime. That means under this unitary transformation or symmetry transformation, <coughs> Hermitian characteristics of the operator is preserved. A is a Hermitian operator. A is a symmetry transform. A prime equal to U dagger A. A is a Hermitian angle. A prime is a Hermitian angle. A Hermitian angle is a close angle. A dagger equal to A angle. Either U dagger AU and the Udam Batatulu. A prime equal to A prime. So, Symmetry transformation preserve the Hermitian characteristics of the operator. This statement means that if a physically observable quantity is represented by the operator, even after the unitary or symmetry transformation, this will be represented as a physically observable quantity. For physically observable quantities of the system are invariant under symmetry transformation. 
and further this concern probabilities also i hope this also you have discussed in the type of operators under the title parity operator unitary operators etc anyway we will prove it probability is always represented by psi square psi ennalla wave function aanu appo nammal use cheyyunnathu sister the represent cheyida wave function psi aanu adinte probability density is then say psi square psi square aanu ini psi ku or unitary transformation nadanu and psi square of course has the meaning of taking scalar product of psi with psi this is scalar product psi psi or in the language of dirac notation this can be represented as the product of adjoint ket psi with ket psi now upon this symmetry transformation psi changes to psi prime and psi prime is equal to we assume that the symmetry transformation is generated by this unitary operator u then psi prime is equal to u psi then what will be the probability the modified probability now that will be scalar product of psi prime with psi prime that is scalar product psi prime psi prime which is now equal to scalar product of psi prime is u psi u psi with u psi that is equal to you can send this operator u from the prefactor space or adjoint ket space to the ket space so that this becomes prefactor space il ninn post factor space like or operator ne send cheyumbo you will have to replace the operator by means of its adjoint adinde dagger konde replace cheyyan tirichu ket space il ninn adjoint ket space like operator ne kondu varumbodum angane thanne aanu cheyyandathu you will have to replace the operator by means of its dagger appo prefactor space il ninn operator u ne yaan post factor space like kodukkugiyaan ऑपरेटर that is nothing other than the earlier probability density so the symmetry transformations preserve probabilities also so these are the properties of the symmetry transformations and the symmetry transformation as i have told you in the last slide can be generated by a unitary operator or an anti unitary operator as well if it's a unitary operator definitely this will give rise to a conservation law because the generator of a unitary operator will be always a hermitian operator and corresponding to a hermitian operator there will be a physically observable quantity and hence that will be conserved whereas the generator of an anti unitary operator will be an anti linear operator and an anti linear operator can never be a hermitian operator so that it will not be representing any physically observable quantity so that an anti unitary operator giving rise to a symmetry transformation will never give rise to a conservation law however there are situations where anti unitary operator give rise to symmetry transformation that will be helpful in deriving some selection rules obeyed by the system so you can consider the derivation of a selection rule such that why there is no transfer of uh, electron transformation from one state to two a state or electron excitation from one state to two a state or why there is no electron excitation from px to py or 2py to 2pz orbitals etc this can be derived on the basis of some anti unitary transformation another important aspect of symmetry and transformation uh, symmetry and conservation is that always a degeneracy give rise to a symmetry transformation 
let u k is an eigen vector of h such that h u k equal to eigen value epsilon k u k and you take a the symmetry transform of this equation u a h u k equal to epsilon k u a u k that means